that's an approach to it, but I still think, yes, Janna can be good, but you don't want to be reactive the whole time. It is fairly easy if you have enough CC to layer and just blow up the Janna like Zerka Blabber at the beginning of the day. Yeah, also can kind of do a similar thing just by hitting W as Alistar trying to oh. knock Rel away when she goes in. Cinder going to get banned here, pretty expected, given that Saligo didn't pick his champion and Ariana's already selected for Insanity. Also, the Draven ban's kind of fun for Ace. He uh, did play that one already. Maybe a champion that he's been playing a lot more of behind the scenes. I think something he's probably pretty comfy with. As uh, there aren't many Draven players on the LCS stage. That's why you don't. That's why you ban away it. from revenge. That's yeah, you just don't <laughs> <Yeah>. know. <laughs> you don't have you don't to, to take the risk. Like, when there's one dude that has a champion that nobody else is playing, it's really difficult to deal with. So you just ban it. And if your team, if your academy team, doesn't even have a player that you can practice against, because that's what often happens is you can just oh, tell right. somebody, hey, do you mind just picking this champion so that we can get some practice against it? But you're never gonna hit the same level of skill that these players in the LCS are hitting with these niche picks. So getting rid of it already, just saying, we don't want to deal with your shenanigans. We just want standard bot lane, standard everything. We have won so many times like this. And the Zoe will be locked in. So that's already two games of Zoe pace. You're one of your favorite mid laners, if not the favorite. Definitely a good one. And I think uh, pretty good in this kind of matchup. So excited to see this one for Saligo. Pretty expected though. This is one of the reasons I don't like Blind Oriana that much is that like, there aren't, like, you can pick kind of whatever you want in Oriana, like, not all that threatening. Just on here for Razor is kind of a cool one, so see how that works out. And of course, what else IMT want to take here for Revenge, who does need his pick. Ooh. And the uh, alarm is on the desk, so perhaps it's a present. Nope. Oh, that would be good. I don't know where it would go, but I would like I would it. not blind Malphite. I really would not blind Malphite. Oh, they can just take Silas. Vega. You go Silas, right? You blind Malphite, Silas, this game's over. <laughs> so. Let's just see something else from Revenge. Yes, this makes a lot more sense. So blind in the Camille, it's a really solid top lane, but what does Fake God have as an answer? Insta-lock Renekt, and he knew what he wanted. Yep, again, knows exactly how the matchups line up. Lots of interaction here. Maybe junglers are gonna be coming out, but Renekton pretty good in most situations. Can certainly get a lot of play, particularly early up against the Camille. But Revenge will feel comfortable on this pick as well. I think his best games have been on carries. Obviously his Aurelia is a big notable game early on from this split. But uh, we'll see. I think this is a matchup that uh, in the lane is obviously good for Renekton, but Revenge is uh, gonna be a threat as the game kicks on both Zoe and Kai'Sa. Despite having some tools to get away from things, gonna be tough to challenge Camille if she gets on you with the Q2 primed and ready. So, IMT sitting at four and five, looking to go even here. And Dignitas looking for win at number seven. Do not want to be dropping down to six and four here. They take the loss versus IMT. Seven and three would be an incredible record for Dignitas because that already just puts you so far ahead from the teams that have to take multiple wins to get back up to you. But I'm curious to see now the top lane matchup, how Revenge plays this Camille since she did get nerfed in 11.4 a little bit to the uh, tactical sweep. But other than that, you usually see her comboed with a lot of champions like Galio or, or something that punishes a top lane a little bit more. Feels like he's more of an island this time around. So we'll see how good Revenge can be on this carry since it really fits the wheelhouse of his champions, whether he plays them on LCS or solo queue. When you have players that like to play Riven, Irelia, Jax, throwing Camille, and they pretty much all function in the same way. So I'm not surprised to see him continue to flex his same bruiser muscles. I mean, Revenge was known for his laning for a very long time, you know, before he even, well before he joined the LCS um, and made the decision to not go pro. And to well, get out of medical exactly school, here. of course. Right. But I mean, like, Revenge has been, like, so good in 1v1s in top lane uh, across a variety of matchups in solo queue for a very long time in North America. So it's one of the reasons it was so exciting that he decided to come back and actually play professionally and now landing himself on the IMT LCS squad. So Camille definitely in the wheelhouse. Revenge is uh, just kind of gives me the vibe that he's, like, a very side lane kind of top lane. Like, he joins the team because he has to, although his coach is going to yell at him. But uh, he doesn't want to leave. You know, it's kind of the, I feel like it's the, the calling of the Riven players. They're just like, ah, I could leave. Or I could 1v1 this guy in top lane. As Zerk say, Destiny and Raze are regrouping to reinvade their own jungle in case Dignitas are in there. Yeah, the, the mindset is uh, you basically just, there's two games going on. There's 1v1s and 4v4s in a map of Summoner's Rift for many top laners. And if you're really good at the 1v1, then you can actually 
kind of play that way for a bit, but the game has changed too much. There's too many objectives to fight. That's kind of why there's the addition of Rift Herald and all these increased dragons and lower cooldowns of camps. There's just too much things to fight over that require the attention of the whole team. So if you're not able to collapse or any of this stuff, you're doing your team a disservice. I like the idea that Herald was put into the game specifically to make top laners go do stuff. Is Neo going to get ignited already? Ray's jumping in there. Damage is good, but not quite enough there. And Ray's no explosive shot. Had the rocket jump, of course. Oh, oh. goodness, back in they go. And Neo, what are you doing there? Get stunned again by the Destiny Flash. And Ray's is going to get first blood in just about two minutes. You know what I love about this kill? That the interview with Afro was first saying how Neo is the player that wants to punish every single CS. And this is exactly what IMT did. Goes for the last hit, instant engage. And then, well, after he flashes out, what is he going to do? Well, he's going to go back for CS. And that's where they go on him. Still had flash. Maybe the thing Neo wasn't tracking, but really good re-engage for Destiny. And, you know, Rel's not a champion that, like, Super good in lane, right? You definitely pick it for you know, mid to late game engages, how powerful our ultimate is. But you'll get ya at level one, which you've seen from quite a few players. This revenge gonna be going on to Fake God. Just barely misses the length on the hookshot dive. So Fake God will not get stunned. Continue to get the wave pushing in towards Revenge's tower, but hasn't gotten all the way there yet. Which is very good news for Revenge, although it is pushing back. He can use that hookshot really aggressively because the Lilia finished in the top side right now, but they now also know that Dardox should be here. Oh, keeps going in. Oh, gets stunned. Fake God actually buffered it through, and now Dardox here. Hello! Revenge says, I don't like this at all, but Zerk's actually here to counter gank, and now Dardox gonna look for the kill. Should be able to find it. Spins around, gets the last auto attack with the rev buff, and Zerk's a. Not going to take any more damage, but still a big chunk of health lost there as Dardoch with a very nice timing in top lane. I like the first hook, but not the second one. You you pop that blast gun and you saw that the Hecarim wasn't quite there yet, but there's nobody in, in the bottom lane. The top crabs haven't been taken. You don't really know what's happening. So going for that play right there, they saw an opportunity, but still lost it. And now I'm all in. The Ooh, the attack propel with the rocket jump. They found it again. IMT, they get the reset. They're going to get the kill. Surely is raised. He's a little too low. The ignite still there for Afro, but Destiny on it again as Neo's got no flash, gets flung over once again, and Raze gets his second kill in this lane. They can get they have another one. Oh, Afro, he's such a beast. Kicks him back in towards the tower. Destiny, they're going to keep stunning him up, and Raze might have a second kill here. It's close, but it's not there as Dardoch now going to answer the problem. But Zerk says such a beautiful presence of mind here in the bottom side to make sure that this gank couldn't happen. In fact, Destiny, he's on there. He's going to grab that stun again, but Zerk has got no health, and Raze still farming it up. Destiny, they're going to keep Dardoch out of the picture as Afro is forced to go back towards the tower, and Destiny, low but not dead, as IMT playing two 2v2 kills already. Man, that rel is really nasty. She is constantly finding those engages. And like you said, the stun on the rocket jump was just sick. They didn't really know what was happening since they had the heal. But before we look at the bottom line, let's see this play again. Because, I mean, Revenge thought he could just one-shot him, right? He hit the stun and go for it right away. But a little bit of hesitation there. I still don't think he would have gotten it. I would have just instead preferred to see them play it a little bit slower. Because you have a pushing wave on the top side there. So you're going to be able to double crab the Hecarim from that. Anyways, we're back to the bottom lane, so great stun there to combo him up, but you see that the Kaiser does a surprising amount of damage here, so Tristana even forced to flash out and burn the heal, despite Dig not having summoners for that fight. Well played there for IMT as they do chase on, but we know what happens at the end of that one as the junglers meet and everybody walks away slowly, even in gold still, but a big advantage for Raze early on here despite being down a couple of CS there in bottom side. And I feel like at this point, if anyone is embodying the like feast or famine spirit of immortals, how they can beat anyone and lose to anyone, it may very well be Destiny. Because I feel like his plays are either lowlights or highlights. And when he hits, he hits big. Yeah, the, the Blitz game is the one that calls to oh, mind. Oh, yeah. That was an insane game. When we first saw him, because it was at the beginning of the games for IMT, we were like, wow, okay, Destiny has some crazy moves. He has some not so good ones, but you love to see those in aggressive moves, and you really don't want to make someone stop looking for those. Despite those plays going badly, you just want to make sure that those don't go as badly because you really don't want to take away the aggressive edge that a lot of players have, which is the constant look for playmaking. And yes, sometimes they go poorly, but if the odds are in your favor, you take them all the way and just improve the times where they're not as likely to go in your favor. All right, well, top lane, going to be pressure here for Fake God. Already level six, going to force Revenge away as Dardoch is here as well, but Revenge isn't even interested in uh, fighting the Renekton because he probably suspects the jungler is here, which is a good assessment. 
And yeah, being six, almost there. It's going to be close off to that minion dies, but it's going to have to get back in XP range, which is taking a little longer than he likes. And thankfully for him, Dardock is gone, and he is going to hit six and be A-OK. -okay. That's all the aftermath of that play topside, which really hurt him because he's really far back in CS, and Fake God still has Flash, so the opportunity to gank him is kind of faded at level six. You'll be able to maybe lock him down, but I think they will be able to find something else on the map. Hecarim is level six, though. So now my eyes are on Dardock and what he is up to, because he's been trying to be fairly active already. Was on two plays a little bit late. The first one, it worked out. But this time around, though, third time could be the charm, since the bottom lane has been such a focal point for this game. Yeah, Neo got his summoners back, though, so it should be A-OK. -okay. Rage doesn't have his back yet, so I don't think IMT are going to get any more aggressive. Just happy to take that lead they've got. I mean, that early Noon Quiver is just giving them a big CS lead. I mean, Tristan is not particularly good at holding waves, but Rage is trying to do what he can here and deny as many minions as he can. As Destin just continues to find potential engage, but Aphrom are going to look for the counter engage, but I don't think he either had Pulv or used Pulv there. Because Destiny did not get stunned at the end of it. Still kicks away the Realm, make sure they can stay somewhat safe, but that explosive shot Doing a little too much damage in the trade as Digger just going to have to let the wave crash and farm it up under the tower. You see what I'm saying, though? This is a really aggressive bottom. If they're going in on cooldown, what often happens is the support will just say, listen, this guy is using his defensive move on cooldown. Just jump in. Come come to this lane, jungler. Please, it's a good kill. So Hecarim wasn't there. They didn't really suspect that he was there. I think he might have been spotted from that blue ward at the blue buff, or the control ward. But other than that, they had no other knowledge of Dardock. And I kind of like this, actually. Destin took a recall, was roaming top lane, and Ray's actually just juked back into the Fog of War. Looked like he was basing with his laner. And actually, he's going to pick up the wave back here as uh, Kaiser has taken that reset. So, going to mow down this wave. Probably not going to do tower damage, even though Trist alone in a lane tends to lead to plates being felled. But Destiny going to try and find the play here. It's mid lane that he wants to look for. So, Liga already used the bubble. Afro's here as well, though. The support timing is very interesting. And both will walk away there, but Afro is certainly reading that play nicely. It does go roaming mid and actually force a flash out as well from Insanity. Good to see supports match each other on the roams to the other lanes because it feels so bad as a laner when your support is not there and the enemy is just harassing you and you're losing lane because of it. So Afro being there, turning things around for Saligo is a big move that allows him to now transition into a Rift Herald for pretty much free. I don't think that IMT will be able to contest this. They're all shoved in. Jungler has base. Tristana is not even in the lane just yet. So it's a free dragon just because Afro was there to counter it to make sure that they had to reset off that and that's a pretty nice pickup that didn't really cost much yeah fake good pressure looking real nice there keeping Camille out potentially joining the fight so IMT aren't even interested in contesting I'll give it over as Dardock does indeed slay the Rift Herald Revenge going to take away the boss cone but he's getting pushed in once again Dardock could dive here but he's probably at least going to drop the Herald just for the plates here we'll see if he sets up the dive first though fake god threatening and Revenge knows that this is a possibility, so he's just going to run away. And that gives Fake God all this time to take more plates. But Dardock, not going to use the Herald just yet here as IMT2 trade on the bottom side and take this dragon. But they're happy to give this trade. It's only the first dragon 10 minutes into the game, so already quite late if IMT wants to stack dragons. And you know that the Camille will have to be important either in the side lanes 1v1s or in the team fight. And if she's not fed, the team fight's really not looking too good besides an ultimate and maybe a stun. And now the sideline is definitely not a place where she can win because Fake God is so far ahead of her with this turret, with the Herald and the first kill that he didn't dive to. So this is going to be really tricky to see how Revenge navigates this champion from a deficit. He's very experienced on this, but so many times we see Camille's just completely flop when they get camped. And we'll see what Revenge can do. Oh he has my a lot of goodness. So I had to like figure out where Revenge was, and I figured he'd be in the top half, and he's not. Uh, Raze was ahead on gold in this game. Now Fake God is right up there at 4,800, the richest person in the game. Uh, that's like 1,000 gold ahead of Revenge already, which is quite a lot. <laughs> Actually, no, it's more. It's 2,000. 2, I, knew I, I knew I saw it correctly the first time. <laughs> yeah, it's two giant belts. It's two giant belts. <laughs> that's a lot what of health. Else? I mean, he's not spending it on that, but he has his completed Gore Drinker already at 11 minutes, so he is in a very top shape. and. Fake God has been quietly pretty good, too. I like that they have consistently given him champions that are both carries when he can play them when it looks like a good time, and when it's not, well, put him on some tank duty or a NAR, and he's been doing well on that, too. They kind of fit the same wheelhouse of bruiser and simultaneous engaged tanks. So I think that Fake God has been another Academy into LCS player that has quietly improved as they just get more experience in 
become wiser as they age. So many of these guys enter the league when they're really young. I mean, 18 years old, you really change a lot when you turn maybe 23. Yeah, for sure. And you've had, you know, years of competitive league experience under your belt. Turns out things are different there. Afro tries to catch Raze, but a great buffer of the rocket jump is going to keep him safe. This does mean Destiny is on the roam, actually towards the top half of the map right now. So not a bad lane to try and affect, because Revenge does need help here in the 1v1. Because if this continues, Pego is just going to get further and further ahead, as we've already seen from the gold lead we displayed earlier. In fact, most of that gold lead that Fake God has is basically the gold lead Dignitas currently have. That's not even the whole gold lead they have, because Raze is so rich. Already has the Kraken Slayer finish, but Dardoch... Trying to find somebody, but does not pressure further into the enemy jungle as Destiny is currently tethered to Xerxes. Dardoch is pretty fed too. He's got the Divine Sunder completed. He's just looking for a fight. So many times when you have this first completed item and the enemy has nothing, you just go into the jungle and you just look for a fight. You're just like, all right, who wants to fight? I'll take you on. I have an item. You don't. Bring it on. My team will back me up because you have Dard uh, Fake God with the teleport as well if you really need some backup. and. And really not going to catch him, though. He has Ooh. ultimate if you really need Fancy to. footwork here, but Saligo looks for the bubble. Destiny going to be forced to flash away. So the attempt engage is dodged by Dardoch, and he holds on to the ulti as a result. Those are the moments where you're really not going to catch Dardoch unless he wants to get caught. If Dardoch just right. randomly thinks, oh, I can fight a rail, great, I've been aching to fight all game long with my Divine Sunder, I'm going to commit to this, then yeah, maybe you can kill him. But if he's just playing defensively, there is no way you're actually going to catch the Hecarim out. Mountain. So they lose a big flash for that. The rail ultimate, pardon, the rail flash is really key if you're trying to start a dragon fight. And it will be relevant in this next minute. Oh, Afro. Hex flash, the Lego flash bubble barely misses it, but the pole is there. The combo is good, and Neo is going to take down Xerxes. Beautiful collapse there. You see a deer in the river instantly clap him, and the flash was really not hesitating. So let's see. I like this move from the observers giving us vision because only now do they see him, and how quickly do they jump onto him? Very quickly. Hex flash into combo. And again, like Saligo, even there with the extra flash he had, looks for the extension, doesn't get it, but that gives Afro all the space he needs to set up that combo. So someone was going to get it, whether it was the Alistar CC or the Zoe Bubble, but that's a very dead Xerxes, and thankfully for him, there's no Dragon Up, so not going to lose that here as Dignitas. Just going to try and consolidate some of that power up towards this top half of the map. Do still have Fake God to lean on here is, again, very far ahead in his 1v1. I think Xerxes went in there because you have Flash, you have your boots, you're really mobile, and if you could have secured that crab, you could have set yourself up for that dragon that they want it's in 30 seconds. So I think he thought that worst case scenario, he flashes out, still gets the crab and sets the team up for the dragon fight, but now they don't get any of that. So I think Dignitas with this crab will feel confident if they want to take a fight here or at least stop IMT from trying to do this. They're not under any pressure because of how late the stacking will be. So as long as they have vision, I think they'll continue to just give farm to Fake God and look for more opportunities where IMT members are caught out. First it was Destiny, now it's Cersei. Hate to see it though comes. Crustacean Greed claims another jungler <laughs> on the rift. I mean, they, they love those Scuttle Crabs, let me tell you. I don't play jungle, it's too hard, but well, every time I hear anything from a jungler, it's about how much they love taking the Scuttle Crabs. So I get it, drawn to it, does not pull off there for Xerxes, Dignitas, find the punish. Now getting that vision around here is Aphromoo is doing the sweeping. And Dardoch, they're onto the dragon. Nice and quickly here is Dignitas, no. We've got plenty of control over the map. Fake God, of course, is already down to the mid lane because he has permanent prior, really, at this point in the game. And uh, perhaps for quite a lot longer, depending on how the scales of the matchup tip. So Dignitas grab the dragon nice and easily and then back to farming as usual. A big part of the prio that Soligo has in the mid lane comes from Fake God. There's no top lane turret. There's a Renekton that has been practically living rent free in your blue side jungle for the past seven minutes. So seeing that a Renekton could possibly collapse with a full Gore Drinker at any moment on the back of Insanity makes it really scary to push up against the Zoe who already has a natural easy time pushing you in. So. I, I think that I respect that Insanity has been just been quietly taking these waves and making sure that he doesn't present the target for Dignitas to dive. I like that idea, though. You know, he's just been in there for so long that maybe you forget. I think it's your jungle. <laughs> That's how long Renekton has just been hanging out on the blue side. It happens. <laughs> 
Alright, well, Revenge again. He's trying to hold the waves and do what he can. Raze, though, is going to take a turret down. So things are going well for the bottom side of the map, which is good for IMT. Gold pretty even as well as Fake God. Is he just solo diving? No, he's not. But he thought about it. Does have the ulti ready to go, but Revenge has Flash and ulti as well. So probably not something you want to commit to. Good bit of poke, though. Spins the Cold Meek around. Dardock is busy taking the grump, which is why they're not diving. Also, they can't see anyone else. And as we know, Destiny was making his way uptown to try and uh, help Revenge if something was going to happen. But that is going to force a recall, which is going to give Fate God some time on the tower. But they're not going to take it because I think they want to line up this dive in mid instead. Yeah, they're looking for it, but it's really unlikely because of how little vision they have in the red side of IMT. You don't actually know if Rail was going to be able to pop up from nowhere or the Lilia would just appear and throw a bowling ball and ruin your plan. So going for those early dives can be a problem for a lot of teams that are just thinking of accelerating the pace of the game without really going over all the steps necessary to make sure that nothing goes terribly wrong. So seeing that there is too many people in my makes it unnecessary to go for that. You just let everybody get on the map. You have a guaranteed way to pressure on this map through the top side. So as long as you can continue to use that like we saw in the tier two top side, then I think Dignitas will feel a lot more at ease going into the river, finding the vision and looking for more ways where IMT will be caught by themselves. Well, it seems like Saligo is going to be doing the Horizon Focus second as we did see in our last Zoe game, so perhaps that's the thing that's pushing Zoe back towards the meta. Again, very good item on her, just makes so much sense with how her kit wants to operate naturally, as Darduk is just galloping around the river, going through mid, is over a ward, but wants to set up here and just see what happens. Fate God is busy trying to 1v1 Revenge. Revenge does have his Trinity Force finish now, though. Do you take a stop off at Executioner's Calling, but is uh, able to fight much better against Renekton, although I don't think I'd call it winning just yet. Dardock, though, threatening raise, but Yorok jumps out, and the red buff does indeed go to the Tristana, but Dignitas is pressuring in, getting this vision down, trying to open up space, because they just need a little bit of extra room here on one side of the map, and if Fago can finish off this tower, or at least get a lot of damage done, then uh, it's going to make their next attempt at this dragon that much easier. As Fago, it looks like he will be able to finish this off, because that cannon creep is doing a whole a lot of work here. Yeah, and just because Revenge was able to hit some damage onto Fake God is not even close to him winning this matchup again because one has an ultimate that is very relevant in a 1v1 and the other one, not really. Camille's ultimate in a 1v1 is if you're already so far ahead that the enemy cannot get away from you, but against Renekton, it really won't do anything at this time. So Fake God still having so much pressure in this matchup and I like that Hecarim was there backing him up just in case anything happens and it's Dig playing calm and collected, but they're going to have to do a little bit more than this. Eventually, the Renekton will start to struggle and Camille will come back. So I need to see that mid lane turret be cracked. That's the big one. You have the Rift Herald from Dardock, and I suspect it'll be popped in the mid lane to set up for this dragon fight. Well, where's Ray's already finished with the Phantom Dancer as well. So got a lot of attack speed. Ready to go behind this Kraken Slayer there. So Tristana is the big piece here for IMT. Is this gold is even really between the two sides. Dignitas are up a thousand gold. But the dragons are split, and uh, with a tower lead, that's kind of the whole gold lead now for Dig, even though like the gold as it's distributed between the matchups will be different, uh, given how the lanes have gone. Overall, especially in a 5v5, it's going to feel much more even there as Destiny eats a big paddle star there from Saligo as Horizon Focus is indeed done, contributing quite a lot there to Destiny's health bar. I'm a big fan of poking out the engage it, supports. Away. Rel, now she's Chunk. How is she going to find the engage without dying right away? So if Soligo just constantly picks on her, IMT doesn't really have a way to start a fight that isn't counting on Dig really being out of position. So I think that as long as they keep tabs on Destiny, whether it's Soliga poking or Aphromoo chunking and zoning her away, IMT will have a really hard time getting these fights, and a lot of it will have to come down to raise, not only dealing with the engage fairly well, but resetting and moving forward. Yeah, the thing about Rel, I think uh, as players are like adjusted to her, they were like, man, so her engage is so good. How do we possibly stop this? And I think like initially I was like, this seems like old Rakano. That's so stupid. And then the more I see Rel, I'm like, huh. There's like a lot of counterplay with CC just because of like how much startup she has on kind of crashing in and popping the ulti. So I feel like when Rel finds her engage angles, it's like disgusting. Like, you can just 1v, 1v5 a team fight set up for your for the rest of your team. But uh, when you can't get it done, especially as teams have adjusted more to her and, and maybe pick supports or champions 
around finding some more counterplay against Pharrell. It's kind of nice to see her not getting banned every game, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because I think she creates such great gameplay moments. Dignitas up two dragons, up gold still. Call it about 1,500 as Terex Gages finish for Faker, but it'll be nice and slow here between these two teams. Again, still those mid towers to work on kind of being the big difference, although as I say that Dignitas have taken that down already. So IMT just feeling a little on the back foot here as Moonstorm Renewer is on the way for Xerxes. Yeah, they, they definitely feel like they are just getting, they're unable to get the lane setups that they want to be able to pressure constantly. They're getting farm in their Orianna and Tristana, which is really good, though, because they are very far ahead of Neo and Soliga farm-wise, right? It's about 30 over everybody, so it's, uh, it's good that they're getting this farm, and I think that's why they're feeling like, okay, well, they're not really doing much with Fake Gods advantage against Revenge. Revenge is continuing to get farm, keeping it at a, that same 30 distance. So with the Orianna and the Tristana getting more gold, that is how you'll win a fight. So the Camille, yeah, lost the early game, but if you can count on a Tristana and Ori late game, then you're totally fine sacking Camille because you're going to be dealing with a Renekton, which will be a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, as long as Revenge, you know, keeps up in gold somewhat, still going to be relevant, right? As Camille picks up items. Oh, so no. So you go here, oh, that's such a fancy bubble angle. Does get the damage down. Oh, what a pop there. Neo going to take out Destiny. And now here comes Dardic over the top. Finds two with the Onslaught of Shadows. But Ray's crucially has already buffed out with the Rocket Jump and Revenge. Will not eat the follow-up bubble. So it is just one pick. But it was a nice one from Dignitas. Removing the rail right again. You see the engage. And once she dies, there's no way that they... Look at this angle. But yeah, so... You didn't even know that Soliga, right? He hops into the other brush. He's like, where is this bubble coming from? He has no idea what hit him. Just woke up from a nightmare. And I really like this move out of Darduck there to actually just run back out. So many times we see Hecarim's just ult in and then realize, oh, I'm already in. I might as well just use my charge to commit myself further. But if you do that, then you don't have a way out. So he says, all right, I tried. It wasn't that good. I'm, I'm man enough to admit that I made a mistake. I can walk out of this one and try again. Yeah, I'm definitely, uh, definitely aware of some pretty famous moments of Hecarim's just going in a little too far. But uh, Revenge again, just doing what he can, picking up the farm. Horizon focus is not done for Saligo. I misspoke earlier. It was simply Hextech Alternator. They got a little bit of extra damage in and went off cooldown. Right. Again, Dignitas feeling pretty happy just to play, play the game as it is. They're happy with their combos. They know if they get vision, which have been pretty good at doing, that Saligo is going to keep them out of uh, most situations. In fact, going to force Raze to rocket jump out there as he did not finish off that ward in the back of the pit. That's a good bubble. Good bubble to defend this Baron. Makes it really difficult since so many champions are are melee or need to be at the wave. So Triss and Ori pretty much have to be at the wave. Rel can't walk up to that. Neither can Camila and Xerxes to commit to that would be really risky as well. We saw how quickly Dignitas collapses on the Lilia when they saw it or in the river. So that ward might just live for quite some time. And that's another advantage of just having ranged champions. It's a lot easier to clear some wards where the enemy has abilities to go over the walls and hit you with their spells. Then you don't actually have a way of clearing something without getting incredibly chunked. And now Dig is going for a uncontested blue side invade, which could net them a Baron if IMT just refuses to acknowledge that they're on this side of the map. I mean, if they knew, they might start it at least. Right. Just force a response no to perhaps get a fight going. But unfortunately, unlike us, or I guess fortunately, the game would be kind of weird if they did. Uh, could see as much of the map as we could. Uh, Dignitas are not going to take a recall instead. And I think kind of what you alluded to earlier, Crumbs, IMT also kind of happy to play it slow because they're just leaning on this Tristana. Like, Raze is not that far from Infinity Edge being done. And like right now, yeah, they both have two items, the Kaisa versus the Trist. Trist item's quite a bit more expensive. <laughs> So Raze is going to be super powered once he hits that three item spike, which is so common. We talk about these longer range later game ADCs. So been a good start there with the landing phase. Kept up the farm. Actually very far ahead on farm still up against Neo. And now IMT perhaps closing the trap here. So Ligo going to be the target. But will not get bowling bolt here as Revenge. Going to have to hook shot away. Ooh, okay. That bubble is going to keep a few people away. Really good zoning. But... Dig does not get much from it. There's still no control word on the pit, but the sleep goes out on Solvigo. Going for Zoe. It's just a one, a one man sleep. Maybe thought they had more destiny. They're going to go in. The Magnus Storm is there. The truck wave is good for two. 
And now they're going to dive in on top of them as Razor's on a killing spree, but Fake God trying to tie them up as Razor's still alive. That's the important one here, but IMT needs to keep fighting here as Razor's trying to cut up the rest of Dignitas are going to collapse. And now Xerxes put to sleep and going to die almost before the CC landed as Saligo is going to finish off the kill he absolutely set up. And Dignitas, what a win there outside the Drake pit. They see a one-man sleep on the Zoe and instantly are very happy to take that fight without that sleep as long as rail does not get the engage up there's just nothing that IFT can do to lock down the important members so the engage goes down onto the Renekton and the Hecarim which are really not the targets you want that puts Neo and Soligo a free reign in the backline and still the focus fire on the carries is on the Renekton who is so tanky he was the most fed member this game barely was he able to stay alive with that gore drinker maybe a few more autos would have done the trick maybe a few more crits but at the end of the day focusing not the carries not the plan not the best plan when it's a 5v5 now Ross is straight to the Baron Digger gonna get it here Dardock's like literally not even there he's gonna walk up to spite it right at the end uh, but uh, I guess the, you know he gets credit for participating there as Dig grabs the Rebel Baron but it just goes to show how strong they felt after that team fight win they got both big objectives out of the river and now all of a sudden a game that was pretty close in goal between the two teams has skyrocketed in favor of dignitas oh yeah and it's good to see that they are taking so much more on the map just immediately recognizing yeah we can do this we don't even need the smite right there we know that imt is not going to make it on time and even if they did they don't have a chance to actually safely make it into the pit for a steal there's no crazy spells that can hit across the map to also take that away from them so it's a really nice dig baron that now is going to be really difficult to deal with because again it's a side lane that you cannot deal with on the side of IMT. Fake God still bowling out revenge. It'll be even harder this time around to pick him with that stopwatch. So 1-3-1 seems to be the name of the game for now. Although Saligo and Oh, that's right. very clever. Barry here for Saligo might not be enough, but the TP's coming in. Three already for Immortals up here. Into the top watch they go. Fake God's here. Dardock's here, and they are going to turn around. Saligo magics his way out of the situation. Kills Xerxes before dying. And now it's a 2v3, but the rest of the squad is coming up as Neo yeets in there onto Insanity. Going to take him out. And now Dardock gets the ulti down. Revenge is forced to counter off, but it's just going to trap him with the rest of Dignitas. A double kill for Neo. Get a major. Make it three easy, nabs the triple kill, and Dignitas are just snowballing all over IMT. They do not let any man be fought without their help. They will help Saligo, they will travel across the map to join these fights. And now with Neo being here, Renekton being this fed, we might see them try to end this game. If Afro can combo one of these members out, they won't live to tell the tale. I think they have done it. They're going to go for it here. I mean, 20 seconds for three of them to come up here. There's so much time for Dignitas with this Baron buff to take down the Nexus. And already Afro's going in. He's CCing people up. The Nexus is now exposed for Dignitas to claim. And they will, in very speedy fashion, close out the day in under 30 minutes. That was a really clean game out of Dignitas. Good map control, strong team fighting. They knew where they're going. We see smiles on the faces of the cameras. That's the big sign, Pastry. That's a big sign after a win. If teams are sad, you know there was just, it was a sloppy game. But when you're smiling after a win, you know that you did what you practiced, that everything went according to plan. And you see it right there. Five big, bright smiles. I mean, maybe not everything, right? Like, 2v2 went so well in the bottom side for IMT. And Afro, uh, Neo and Afro have actually been really good. Maybe not as good as the best bot lanes, but have been very competitive, very aggressive, which has been really fun to see. And they just kind of, like, took it in their stride. Like, okay, we lost. Like, we maybe shouldn't have got killed there twice in uh, in about four minutes. But they knew Fake God had the lead. They happy to lean on their mid game and even though things kind of delayed a little bit in the middle section of that game once they had a lead big enough to grab that baron they just won they made no major plays that would have been those drastic mistakes that we have seen from teams in the lower standings that have gotten to winning positions and then make one giant move where they lose it never went for those giant moves everything felt very calculated even that last fight they didn't start that they were setting up the one three one it was imt that looked for a play and it was their quickness to respond to it that actually won them the game i think you noted it uh, in that last fight around dragon where you said like just look how tanky fake god is uh, Ray's didn't have Infinity Edge for that fight. That, to me, was like the missing piece to get enough damage to kill Renekton. And then I think you can reset and win the rest of the fight, and the game might look quite different. But he got AA after that, and then just never got to use it. There was no team fight when Tristan was ordering that much ever again. Oh, uh, kind of sucks. You have all the items, but no one to hit. And then when you finally complete it, the game's over. You don't even have a an instance in Summoner's Rift. 
Yeah, tough stuff there, but Dig improved to seven and three. Only three losses in, uh, you know, losing to pretty good teams overall. But we are going to move on. Go to quick commercial to close out the day.